nature gives us lots of beautiful things to look at every day. When it comes to working with metal clay, it also gives us lots of fun things to work with. This bracelet design was inspired by nature and a trip that I took to Oregon. I came across these redwood acorns and acorn tops. And being from the East Coast, I was very unfamiliar with what that actually looked like in person. And when I saw them, I just had to do something with them. And based on their shape, end caps is what they said to me. And then this sweet little baby acorn, I made into a charm. And so that I could reuse them, I wanted to approach this uh, by making a mold. And the mold that I chose to do is a two-part silicone mold. And then once the mold was made, I filled it with the clay. Once the clay was dry, I removed it from the mold and refined it using different sanding supplies. Once it was ready and fired and then finished, I incorporated that into a design. And I chose to go with a Kumihimo design. So I used the Kumihimo disc. And to manage the threads, I used the Huggy spools as bobbins. And I wanted to add beads. So I used the bead spinner to help load my thread. We used a silk thread. And for the beads, I chose Magatamas. They just had a really cool shape and went very well with the acorn tops. Once I had it all together, it was assembled and it looks like this. And you can see the end caps and the little sweet baby acorn charm. Now to go back to the beginning, we're gonna make the mold and then bring you all the way through all the steps so you too can convert anything from nature into a design just like this. So to make the mold to capture our acorns, I'm gonna take equal parts of each of the two part compound put a little pad of each together, and then I'm gonna mix them till they're well blended. You shouldn't see any color striations, they should just be completely blended. And it doesn't take very long to do that. You don't wanna over mix it. So once you see the color come together, then you know you're ready to go. And it is important for this compound to get equal parts. You can actually weigh the material so that you're sure you have equal parts. I tend to go by eye, but you can use a scale. All right, so once the compound is completely blended, I'm gonna put it into kind of a flat pad, and then I'll take the acorn, press the top into the center, and then gently press so the molding compound comes up around and captures the acorn top completely. And you have time to press so that you're really capturing all of those, I call them scales, I'm sure that's not the right term, but they look like scales and they feel like scales. And there's a lot of layering that I try to capture in each mold. Now you'll set that aside to cure. And it's a five minute molding compound. I find that it is definitely set up in five minutes, but in case you wanna be sure, the way to test it is to press your fingernail into it. And if it doesn't leave a mark, then it's good to go. So to unmold this so that you don't damage the item, I'm going to cut it apart. And I have a very sharp blade and I have the protective handle on it and I'm just going to score through, trying to be sure I'm getting through the material but not cutting the acorn in half. And then I'll peel it apart and carefully unmold it. I don't wanna rip the mold any further than I have to to release this, but I also don't wanna break the acorn. So you can see it's just ready to come right out. And because it's silicone, it really does release very easily. And I'll hold this open so you can see how it really did capture the detail. Now I've done the same thing for the little baby acorn and you would just unmold it the same exact way. These are the two molds ready to go and now we're gonna fill them with clay. Here we go.
So the molds are ready and they're ready to be filled with clay. But before I go there, what I want to look for is to see if any debris remained. And you'll want to just brush that out or remove it so that you're sure you have any little particles from the acorn or whatever you molded removed. So I'm going to flatten out a piece of clay and I'll open up the mold and place it like so and then close the mold up. Now because this is silicone, the clay naturally won't want to stick to it so it's a little bit tricky. So I'm going to take the end of the paintbrush and I'm going to maneuver the clay into the mold and in essence what I'm doing is thinning the clay out so it's not too thick in one area as well as making sure I'm pressing against the texture so that I capture all of those details and so that I'm creating an end cap that will look like my acorn tops, just this time in silver. If you find that you feel the clay is drying out, you can apply a little bit of water. Just know that it's going to get a little bit muddy. And I'll go back in with the other end of the paintbrush. This paintbrush has been treated, so it's not going to stick to the clay. But you'll see the clay is going to release a little bit of that muddy texture that happens when it gets wet. And you'll just want to make sure you clean that off when it's dry and then capture those dry, dry particles. And then to do the acorn charm, it's a little bit different. Same concept, just a little bit different process. So I'll pinch off another little piece of clay. I will place that into the mold. And because this is a solid piece, I'm going to put that into the mold. Make sure it's tucked in so that I don't get too much of a seam from where the mold meets. And I'll hold it closed. And then I'm going to just compress. And what I'm doing is pressing the texture into the clay. And because I'm holding it closed, it's kind of keeping the clay into shape. Now, these are ready to set aside to dry. And because the drying time varies depending on where you live, and because I tend to be impatient, what I like to do after about 15 minutes, I will look inside, see if the color's changing. You'll, you'll notice that the color will get lighter and lighter as the clay dries. And here, this one's further along. And what I'll do is I'll carefully remove it, and then I'll place it either onto um, a heating dish or just let it air dry. And then as it starts to turn more white, you'll know that it's actually drying even further. And by removing it from the mold, you're gonna give it a lot more um, ability to dry more quickly. If you leave it in the mold, it'll definitely at least take overnight. So once you feel comfortable, unmold it, set it aside to dry, and do the same thing with the acorn. Then, once they're dry, we're ready to refine them, and we'll take care of that next. So the pieces are dry and I've unmolded them and we've got these sweet little guys ready to be worked to the next stage and we're going to start refining and you really want to take your time with this part and so I'm going to start with the green or the 400 grit polishing paper and I really don't want to take away the texture that I've worked so hard to retain from the original acorn through the molding process, but I do want to make sure the design is perfect and more with what it would be that I'd like in my finished design, as well as these sharp ends. I want to make sure that they are not sharp. I think they lend um, a natural look to the piece, but I really would prefer them not to cut the thread or you know scratch the wearer. So just pay attention to that. And I find a beading needle really helps get into the grooves and it works with the texture that's in the acorn already. And it'll just help take away some of the clay and help increase that layered look. But the beading awls are also effective. 
you just want to be careful. This is a hollow piece, and it could be very easy to just go right through, or to be so concentrating on what you're doing that you forget that you're actually holding the piece firmly, and you could squish it and you know collapse it in on itself. So just keep all of, all of that in mind as you're working. Of course, it's an awful lot to remember, but as you're working, you'll really understand exactly what I'm saying as you start making your piece. And the carving tool also does an effective job. And here you can see the seam from where the mold came together. And that's again where the polishing papers can come into play. And you would just take your time to create a more natural looking area. And for the acorn tops, they are going to be our end caps. So we'll need to make sure that the top has an opening. So we need to create a hole. This one actually has a hole already started just from the way the mold was created. So you just want to use the jeweler's file and enlarge that space. And it may be that twisting doesn't work and you just want to go more in a back and forth motion. All right. And the sanding sticks are also useful in this area and they will actually even smooth out what the jeweler's files did. You know, the jeweler's files have teeth. These are more of an abrasive, so they will remove the grooves and make it more of a smooth opening. And these also are great for cleaning up any of the additional texture marks. So really, any of the tools that you have, um, you can sand to your heart's content and really get this perfect. And then what we need to do next is add the rope to make the acorn able to be hung into our finished design. So we'll be adding that rope next. So the acorn is all ready to be made into a charm. And to do that, we need to add a little flourish of clay to add a loop. Really just need a little bit. Uh, I've cleaned the work surface, so there's no oil. I made sure the bead roller was free of any sort of release material. And I've got a little snake started. And with the tool, I will just, I'm putting some downward pressure and that will help elongate it. I'm also trying to at least show you this one part first. And then I'm going to angle it so I can taper it so that one end is a little thicker than the other. Maybe you can see that. So I now will move the snake to the nonstick surface. I have my dried acorn. And because it's dry, I want to uh, wet an area where the clay will be attached so that the two come together but I don't want to make it too muddy because then the fresh clay will just slide. So I'm just going to add a very little bit of water and then I, I will add more water later but for now just to get it started so I can anchor the clay into place I will, you know this is going to be too long so I'm going to trim it and I like the thinner part so I will just cut off that little piece and I will anchor this wider end onto the acorn and then kind of spiral it around and then make sure before you get too far that you create a loop. Now it's a little hard to see. I'll show you as soon as I get it done. And there's no uh, no rules, which is what I like about working with clay. This is really what you want. And how the acorn kind of dictates what you do. So I'm going to form a little loop. And I'm going to press the clay to the acorn. Like that. And then I will wet it. And once I introduce the water, it'll help it stick to itself. So I have a little bit more control and it'll help it stick to the dry. 
and I want to anchor it there. You don't want to leave it too vulnerable. You also want it to look nice. So I'm going to work that a little bit. There we go. And I'll use the end of the paintbrush to just create a more smoothed and united connection. And again, really, there's no rules. It's just so that you have a loop to work with so you can suspend the acorn once it's fired. There. All right. And where I started the acorn, I'm just going to, or started the wrap, I'm just going to use the end of the paintbrush to feather the clay into the acorn. That'll help thin the clay out so I can work back down to the texture that the acorn had originally as well as really gives me a secure attachment. Once it's dry, you have another opportunity to refine it so that it is in line with what you would like. So here's another example. And you can see this one has a little bit more of a pronounced loop and it just has a wrap that kind of goes all the way around. So there's no rhyme or reason, it's really whatever you want. And the sanding sticks and the sanding swabs are really helpful in this area because it's um, it's round, it's circular, so these get in there nice and easily. But they're also uh, a great grit. So they will refine it uh, in a way that's not too aggressive. Because at this point, the rope was nice and smooth, my connections were nice and smooth, and it didn't need a lot of work. If you have an area that does need a lot of work, then just um, consider starting with the jeweler's file so that you can remove more clay a little bit more quickly but these polishing supplies are actually really sufficient for the work that's needed at this stage. And because we refined the acorn before we added the rope, it makes your cleanup within the acorn most likely not that necessary. You may have a couple of areas where the rope was joined, but really there's not a lot of work that has to be done because you put the time in already. So once that's ready to go and our acorn ends were already finished, we're ready to fire, and we'll cover up some information on that next. The pieces are ready for firing. You've got them in really great shape, and now it's time to turn them into metal. So, I'm going to fire these in a kiln. They're too large to do with a torch, so to get them ready for the kiln, I have my kiln shelf, it's this guy here, and then I have a fiber blanket on top of the kiln shelf. The fiber blanket's gonna give the acorn tops and the acorn charm a really nice cushion of support. As the metal heats up, this is where gravity will definitely not be your friend. Um, depending on the diameter, you may find that the acorn will collapse on itself. So. To prevent that, um, I very carefully have broken off a piece of the fiber blanket to be able to insert it inside. When using the fiber blanket, it would be important for you to make sure you wear a mask. So you can wear a dust mask and you want to make sure that as soon as you're done working with it, you wash your hands. Um, it's a lot like working with fiberglass and you really don't want to have those particles remaining on your hands and then go on to doing something else. So just work with caution. I have filled the acorn top with fiber blanket and then with a few additional pieces, I'm going to support the acorn top just in case for good measure. Again, this piece isn't that large, but just so we're sure it's going to come out of the kiln the way we want. And the acorn itself, with that loop on top, you can put a small piece of fiber blanket in there, but it's really not necessary. It's, it's your choice. We'll fire this in the kiln. I'll take the kiln shelf and place it onto the kiln feet and then fire it in the kiln. And once it's cooled to room temperature, you can move on to finishing. I'll show you how that goes. Just set that aside. So once they come out of the kiln, you can use a variety of finishing techniques. You can um, 
start with the wire brush or you can use the jewel tool. A lot of the finishing options are available in the fundamental section, so be sure to check out all the, the options that you have available to you. For this, I will just show you for the wire brush. This really works very well to get into the different layers of the texture of the acorn. And you'll just go around, all the way around, making sure you get into all of those crevices. And then you'll want to also make sure you pay some attention to burnishing the inside of the acorn. You most likely will never see it, but you'll know if you didn't actually finish it. And I like to just make sure my work's completely finished before I finish my design with it. So once you've done that, you can stop with the nice satin finish or you can move on again into additional finishing techniques. These pieces were done using the tumbler. So I did the wire brush and then I moved these into the tumbler and I let them polish with the stainless steel shot. I like this finish. Um, it's really what worked well for this design in my opinion. And then you can stop there or you can add a patina. Those instructions are also available in the fundamental section. These pieces are ready to be used in your finished design. And no matter what you choose to do, if you want to make a kumihimo design like we have here, that's a great option and it makes nice use of these larger end caps. Or you could do a regular beaded design on Accuflex and come up with your own concept of how you want to use the end caps in a finished piece. Really, once you have them, you could do anything you want with them and make a really beautiful piece all of your own. Enjoy working nature into your next design and figuring out how you want to use these end caps and charms.